I think you've, you've taught me this principle so well over the years because I think, and I, and I want to stick on this for a second because it's true. I mean, you know, we just, the days of, of I, I think right now there's, God is moving. Yeah. The easiest w- way to kill the movement of God would be for the people of God to come against one another. Like we've just seen Dude, it. Division, so often, man. Division yeah. squelches yeah. the spirit, but unity yeah. It commands a blessing, right? That's right? And so there's something really powerful that God's doing. So we got to fight for that. That's right. It's easy to think that stru- structure squelches freedom. What you mm. said is that we actually create structure so that we can have freedom yes. within it. Yes. And Mark. what I found yes. in in ministry and in, in my leadership journey is when I come prepared with a plan. Mm. It's honestly when I can move the most freely. Completely agree. When I don't have a plan and I don't come prepared, what I what I'm saying is I want freedom, but I'm just, it's just an excuse for my laziness and my lack of preparation. <laughs> lack of discipline. You know what I mean? Yeah. Welcome back to the Love Leadership Podcast. I'm your host, Mike O'Connell, and I am back with the man, the myth, the legend, my pastor, Todd Doxon. Let's Let's go, go, baby. Come on, OC. Come on. Living the dream out here, man. I I think we're feeling the energy because the team just put on a hype video, bro. Like It took us back. (laughs) Seriously. Before before they hit record, man, we're watching a college football team work out off-season. Didn't Mm. it take you back, man? I mean, come on. I remember winter conditioning my going into my junior year. Our coaches got fired after my sophomore year. O ten and one. You've heard that story. How about being the quarterback of an O ten and one co- <laughs> Division one college football team? Come on. Is there anything more humbling? Oh, geez. and it's exactly what I needed in that season. I probably still need that. I get so prideful at times. My wife's like, "Yes." <laughs> But I remember, man, winter conditioning. You remember like stations? Oh, stations, bro. Oh, I hated them. But the competition about those, nothing cooler. Like. You get in that environment, and I tell you, the people that are surrounding you, you got the coaches in your grill, like you hate it, but you love it because you're there, right? 5.30 a.m., you know, you're a college kid. Dude, I was just sleeping <laughs> until noon last year, and That's now all I mean. of a sudden I'm up at 5, 5.30. But the competition, you're just oh, like, ah. Oh. You're like, let's go. Crazy games. Coach McGettigan, my strength coach, man. You remember Getty? Oh, Getty. <laughs> Gave you that stick. Oh, God. He gave, remember, he gave you that. Mm-hmm. That dude, such a legend. I love him. But yeah, man, I I feel great. I, I like the off season. There's something about the preparation behind the scenes that, you know, it's actually a good leadership value right there. Oh, behind, totally is. Who are you behind the scenes preparing for the, for the upcoming season? For sure. And I mean, it's, it really fits into why we're doing this. I mean, we talk about this all the time. Mm-hmm. We haven't figured leadership out, but we want to go on the journey with people. We want to glorify God and help people. That's it. And the reality is you don't get better unless you, you know, invest in your growth. That's right. So the connection is there's so many parallels to, you know, being (laughs) athletes and knuckleheads and getting, (laughs) yes, sir. Let's go. You got to lean in though. You got to lean in. So we're going to lean in today. I'm I'm excited to to just, you know, wrap on the topic that we're going to talk about. But the movie Jesus Revolution just came out. So before we kind of segue into mm-hmm. today's episode. I want, can you just tell me, like, what are your thoughts? Jay and I are going tonight at 930. Come on. It's so cool to think, like, this church, Love Church, has existed for 15 years, yeah, and yet our fruit is associated to what began, you know, in that movie. <laughs> it's kind of cr- crazy. Well, it's funny to think when we first started the church, it was called Calvary Chapel West Omaha. Wow. And then we changed it to Calvary Omaha. And then, of course, then the the wild yeah. vision of the electric pink L with the arrows and, you know, changed it to Love Church. Everybody thought I had lost my mind. And isn't it funny to think of that? Yeah, yeah it really is. People it's crazy. were like, I, uh, yeah, like, what's going on what, here? What, did you smoke another one? What are you doing, brother? <laughs> like, and I was just trying to be obedient, but yeah. you're right. I mean, <clears throat> Denise and I went to see the, the movie and we happened to be down in Fort Lauderdale. Wow. We just had our board meeting. The very next day, we go to see Jesus Revolution. And if I'll be honest, I'll be honest with you, man. We were weeping throughout the entire movie. Wow! Because you know, Chuck. It's the story is about Chuck Smith, who at the time was a struggling pastor, kind of dead church. Lonnie Frisbee, you know, Frisbee comes in, and this just absolute revival happens, and 
you know, now this many years down the road, here we are still riding the wave of this Jesus movement, mm. the Calvary Chapel beginnings. And quite honestly, I feel like we're almost at the beginning of a new one. I mean, it just so yeah. happens that, you know, the revival at the college recently yeah. and all these other different colleges and even just what's happening here, people are being touched by Jesus all over the place here in our area not just love church, different churches. It just seems like there's just more of a hunger. I feel like there's more of a, there used to be kind of this gray area in the Midwest. Well, yeah, dude, I'm I'm floating up to heaven. I know God, everything's good. And yeah. I just feel like the gray Christianity is moving from black and white and yeah. people are starting to sense, mm -hmm. like I've walked this route, this ain't really hitting it. Like where's the real thing? That's it. Even religious people, like, yep. religion's not enough for me, man. Checking the box at church, not getting it. There's something about having an experience with God, a genuine experience, and then a relation, an ongoing relationship with God. And what's been beautiful about the Calvary movement, it's just simple Bible teaching, simple Bible reading combined with the Spirit of God. It's the Spirit and the Scriptures and the balance not only like the balance, we were just talking with yeah, Cap today, the fullness of both. Of both, there The it fullness is. of the Spirit, the fullness of the Scripture. And you got to see that, man. I mean, look at the movie. You got Chuck Smith, you know, systematic Bible teaching, Lonnie Frisbee, you know, filled with the Spirit, spiritual gifts. Greg Laurie, a young guy that comes in, super gnarly past, mm -hmm. where his mom married and divorced seven times. But you just see the power of a full surrendered life. And now Greg... You know, Greg was our pastor when we were in Bible college mm -hmm. years ago, back in yeah. 2001, Mike. Unbelievable. We would go up Sunday night to Harvest. He was our he was our pastor. Pastor Chuck Smith would come to our Bible college in Marietta Hot Springs every Friday, and he would just open his Bible, man, and like, no notes. He wouldn't even like read. He would like have his Bible open, but he'd be like teaching the book of Ruth. He nice. taught for an hour. He just was like talking. Didn't even. I was like, bro, you want to read the Bible? He's like, you didn't need to. He just had it right here. That, yeah, his his ministry is just wild, man. Every time I listen Golly, to him man. preach the word, I'm like, geez, the guy just the fruit is is so evident that he just lived a life of soaking in the scriptures. That's it, and you know? and you see it, you know, to this day, you know, we'll prepare messages, and I challenge all of our Bible teachers after you prepare your message, you hear from the Spirit, you're studying. Go back and listen to Chuck. What does he say on the text? Yep. You know, I, I happen to be preaching, you know, I'm preparing Psalm 32. And just yesterday, so I prepared the message, and just yesterday, you know, I turned to Pastor Chuck, you know, C3000 series, Psalm 32. And he's like, no, let's turn now to Psalm 32 and just lays it out. And I just love, you know, to this day, that, that ministry continues to flow through this church. For sure. And it's so Powerful. beautiful because, you know, you're talking about it. I mean, dude, there is something absolutely stirring up uh, for you and I. I mean, you've been, in, yeah. you've been in leadership in the church and doing this thing longer than I have, mm. but I've been here a decade and I can, you know, you start to, you know, when you're in it long enough, you can sort of sense the season. And uh, there's no question, man. I, I love uh, our, our youth pastor, Pastor Ben says this, that it's not the next generation, it's the now generation. It's a great and phrase. God truly is stirring up revival in the now generation. This these college kids, the the youth. I mean, last night, you know, our auditorium was packed and young kids are getting baptized and sharing their story. I mean, it's so cool that God is using I'll I'll use the language the next generation, but they are the now generation. And man, revival is breaking out. But I love what you're talking about. You know, as the spirit's moving, mm. are we connecting these people that are experiencing revival to the scriptures? Boom. Where they can uh, learn who God is, yeah. who they are in him, and mm. what God cares about. And I know that's just such a passion of yours. And so here's the interesting thing, and this is what we're going to lean into today, is there's a connection here. Like, mm -hmm. this is a growing season. Yes. For the church at large. Yes. But we're experiencing that here at Love Church, unlike we've ever experienced, honestly. Mm -hmm. Like there is there is growth that is happening, new people showing up, mm -hmm. and that brings what? Growing pains. That's right. And so I want to lean into just even your experience this weekend and 
Um, I think, man, you shared a, a, a word with our staff on Monday yeah. that was so powerful. And I think not only could our church benefit from it, but many leaders all over the place, I think, could benefit from the wisdom that you shared with us. Couple, couple thoughts. Um, number one, at our church, we don't call them problems; we call them opportunities. That's it. And I think that's, you know, it might sound dumb, like just vernacular, but I think it's, it really is how you look at stuff. And yeah, you know, every week I ask our staff to participate in our Slack channel. You know, their assignment from the Sunday experience. You know, the worship worship encounter. From your perspective, what's the win? You know, what are a few wins? What are the opportunities? And then this week's, you know, what was your number of outreach? You know, and and I ask them that. And the word opportunity is is not a problem. It's an opportunity. Come on now. How can we grow? How can we get better? How can we serve the Lord better? How can we serve those that God's sending our way better? And, so you know, it's funny because you go back to the movie. If you go back to the movie, the Lord just started doing amazing work at Calvary Chapel in Costa Mesa, mm -hmm. and they had this little church, and all of a sudden the hippies started showing up, and uh, it was beautiful, this this balance of like some of the wily vet Christians, some of these new people getting saved, but they just ran out of space, Mike, and they they <laughs> have this outdoor tent. Now, I wish we could do that. We're not in Cali, yeah. Southern Cali. Yeah. Woo, Nebraska. So, but th this this question of we're running out of space. Wow. And so I saw that throughout these wins and opportunities in many people's opportunities. You know, we're just flat out of space with kids at our nine and eleven. There's just there's no more space. No more space. Um, parking. There, there's just no more parking. And people, I mean, the cars that people are parking at different places in the lot. It's just so. You know, on one side, we can just complain about that. Mm -hmm. Well, wouldn't, isn't that the goal of any church is to go reach as many and disciple as many people as you can? Totally. So to me, I'm like, what a phenomenal opportunity. It's so good. And, you know, so this week, Mike, this past week, it was great. You know, we believe in a team teaching approach. So it was your time to to lead for as the Bible teacher by the way, phenomenal job, bro. Thank like you, I, I could yeah. listen to you all day, and your leadership that day was powerful. Thank and you. what it does, you know, it gave me the opportunity, Denise, and Denise. Denise was in kids to be able to see kind of what's going on. I was on the greeting team and then the parking team, mm -hmm. and I loved it. I got to hang out with some of the volunteers and get to know them a little bit more. So good. See with my own eyes, yep. okay, what is the space limitations mm -hmm. in kids and then mm -hmm. on the park, you know, in the parking area, which, you know, again, I I'm, I don't want to turn away anybody that Nobody. God's sending our way. God, Jesus is touching people. He's healing people. He's saving people, Come healing on. marriages. Come on. He's casting away addictions. Yeah. There's freedom. Like there's something special happening, you don't want to squelch that. And if there's space limitations, how do you then pro prayerfully and proactively and practically eliminate anything that's getting going to get in the way of that happening? Mm -hmm. And so this this Sunday at eleven at our eleven, come on, I was on the parking team. I got to share the story yeah, so if you good. don't mind. And we had to shut the the lot became full about eleven, maybe eleven oh five. Well, people are still coming in, you know, late. I mean, tons of cars are still coming. And so it's funny because I'm working with, you know, a couple of teenage volunteers and we're having a good time. And and I'm asking them, well, dude, we're out of space with kids, with parking. What would you do? I'm asking these like 17 year olds. I'm like, all right, you're the lead pastor. What do you do? It was great to hear their perspective and we're just having a ball. And it's funny because these people are coming in late to church, right? And the first thought they see me, they're like, he's not supposed to be here. Like the teacher is at the door, like, and I'm late to class, you know, it was hilarious. So, That's so and funny. then the second thing was, you know, cool, man, it's PT, you know, yeah. and they're rolling down their window. And, and by God's grace, right across the street from the church, there's a parking, or there's an apartment complex. Yep. And we made an agreement with them. We get a hundred of those parking places. So it was cool. So I'd welcome them and I'd be like, hey, just so you know, if this happens again, where you know you're running a little bit late, no problem. We have an agreement. There's a hundred parking pa places right there. Take a left, and then you know they. I'm telling you, 20, 25 cars or more. They're parking in the lot and they're coming in. It's 11, 5, 11, 0, 10, 11, 10, 11, 15. They're still coming, and then they would walk right by us and we'd high five and hug them and whatever. And there was this one couple that. 
you know, come into the church in and out. And I just have always just from afar, just had a heart for them and some of their kids and they're walking in. It's probably, it's got to be closer to 1130. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. all right, man, like I'm shutting down the parking team and I'm getting into church. I want to hear, you know, another word. For sure. And I get in for the tail end of worship and I go up in kind of the balcony area of our church. And I don't get to do this a lot, but I love it because I can just pray and worship. And and then you take the stage and God gives you this word about, we just, you know, El Roy, it's the God who sees you. You might have come in here mm. and and there's something in you that you have, you don't believe that you've been seen by God, yeah. you're, that you're accepted. And it was a powerful word. Sorry if I'm hacking no, that, is, but, but there was something about that. And as you're expressing that, all of a sudden in the auditorium, there's people that I'm God's highlighting for me to go pray oh, over. Real. And those that know me, I'm more of like a practical Bible teacher <laughs> coach, you know? I'm not, I don't flow in the prophetic as much as yourself or Cap or Denise. And I'm like, this is so cool what's happening, the Spirit of God. And there was one of my friends right in front of me that I just hug him and we're like having a bromance in the middle of you leading wow. and and the worship team comes back into it. I'm praying over him. He's, you know, we're hugging it out. And then I go down. I'm praying for a couple of people. But you invited some people up kind of the stage for prayer and for the worship team to just just sing over them. And and there was the couple that came late with their kids. And they're wow. both at the altar. And and you could just sense God's doing something. Jesus is touching them. Wow. And I just go over and I'm and I lay hands on this guy and I'm I'm praying for him and and God just speaks to me in the moment like we have to do all we can to continue to create on, space. Man. I don't care what it takes. And <laughs> God brought me back to that story of you remember when uh, the homies brought their paralyzed oh, friend yeah, to sure. Jesus because they're like Jesus of Nazareth is is healing people for sure. And I care love my friend so much. We gotta go bring him to Jesus. And yep. so they bring him on the mat. By the time they show up, the place is packed. Packed. Oh, you know, no more parking. The love kids area is packed. Like, what do they do? Well, too bad. We'll just go back home. They're like, whatever it takes. I love my friend. I care. I cannot not have him experience a touch from Jesus. So what do they do? They go break open the darn roof to create some space. And I and I just shared that with our team. Like, I just recommitted to our team. I'm like, whatever it takes, I don't, you need me to teach three times on a Sunday, four times, a couple times on a Saturday. What, you know, do you, what do you need? You need me to go pray and, and uh, raise some resource for other locations. Like it's, and it's not like a striving or Mm -mm. I want to be a cool church or look at us, how awesome we are. I, I can authentically say that couple for him to be touched by Jesus. And you said it. You gave an invitation later for men to lead. He comes forward. Comes forward, comes, man. gives his life to Christ. It's like... Oh, my goodness. Wh- I mean, you think about the trajectory of that man and that family's life. It wh- what, what... Are you kidding me? Like, it doesn't matter what we need to do. And it was healthy because I just sense amongst our whole team, like, mm-hmm. I think they're all in. The spirit in the room was, it was so powerful. Yeah. Like as you were sharing that word with our team, the challenge and really in front of the whole team, recommitting to the yeah. mission that God's called us to, Yeah, you could just sense it, man. There were there were tears in the room yeah, because it was connected to life change. There's a couple of things that I just want to, I you, you said so, so much gold there that I want to, I want to encapsulate some of that yeah. uh, for our audience just to make sure they're, they're catching what you're saying. Number one, I think I love what you said about this idea of are we seeing it as a problem or an opportunity? Right. You know, limitation is the breeding ground for innovation. That's right. That's why I love the story. And what we can learn from those friends is they were willing to do whatever Boom. it would take That's it. That's so it. that they could get their friend to Jesus. The question is, will that be our mentality? That's right. And I think there's so many leadership lessons that that in you sharing that story, I just hope our listeners um, hear this. Number one, uh, I love your humility to create space Mm -hmm. where you can actually go have the experience that you did this Sunday. Because here's the reality. Uh, 
space limitation, servant limitation. Right. These are things that have been showing up in those weekly reports mm -hmm. for a while now. Mm -hmm. But this past Sunday, you got to go see it firsthand. Boom. And you did that because you were willing to, you know, raise up other leaders, allow somebody else to step into the pulpit. Yep. And here's the cool thing is you not only got to see it for yourself, but number two, you asked the frontline people the question of what would you do? Yes. And I think as organizational leaders, if you're listening today and you're experiencing opportunities, not problems, uh, I think there's something that you can pull from that. Be willing to go to your frontline leaders and mm -hmm. ask them for potential solutions because they're the ones that have to deal with it <laughs> week so in and week out. And here you are, the lead pastor of the church, asking the 17-year-olds, what would you do? Now, here's the cool thing. I genuinely, I genuinely thought this as I was reflecting on this weekend. The couple that you just described, the experience that they had, like we're using that as our picture. We want to create right. more space yes. for that to go down. Yes. If you weren't out there, and if the parking team wasn't out there redirecting them to the other parking lot, here's the question. What if they just drove home? For sure. The, see, and that's the thing, Mike, That just that couple, the, from, from the practical perspective, there would be no direction with parking, there'd be frustration. They're already late, you know, so they're probably like, you know, um, you know, they got young kids, you know, what's going to happen? Nothing good is going to happen from that. But to have a, a team of volunteers that care, it's, they're clearly communicated with, they can guide people to this extra parking. They can lovingly welcome them as they're walking right by, you know, that's powerful. And then when they get to the kids space, like, we have enough volunteers, you know, we're not stressed out. And that was the other thing. And, and I'll, if, you know, if you're at Love Church, I'll even challenge you, man, get in the game because yeah, let's go. It, it, this is what we did, Mike. Um, and I'll read it. It's Matthew yeah. nine. So that was one of the opportunities, man. We need more team members to yep. jump in, more, jump more in. volunteers, more servants to jump in. Matthew nine, I read this, uh, verse 37 and 38. He said to his disciples, the harvest is great but the workers are few. So that's the opportunity. That's what the harvest is great. I mean, God's doing a miracle mm -hmm. all throughout this city, all, all through all across this land right now. So, so verse 38 says, so pray to the Lord who's in charge of the harvest, ask him to send more workers into his fields. So what was interesting is I said, too often, whether it's a church, a leader, a ministry leader, or an organizational leader, you know, you see this opportunity. We don't have enough employees. We don't have enough volunteers. So freak out and just like, you know, uh, get all stressed out. Yep. No, Jesus just wow. said, so pray to the Lord who's in charge of the harvest. He's the one in charge of sending the people Come on here. Now. This is ask, so good. Listen, ask him to send more workers into his field. So I challenged all of our staff, like, have you been praying and fasting and asking the Lord? So there's the prayer. And have you then practically set up systems and training and, and set your people up for success when they do come to show up to serve? They have a great experience. That's it. Yeah. And, and they're having a good time. Because if you're not praying, number one, but then also practically creating an environment that's conducive of health and communicating well with your people, why would you expect them not, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. they're going to bounce. And then 100%. you're going to constantly be crying about how many volunteers you don't have. Yeah, as quick as they come in, as quick Let's as go they right. go out. And that's something that I think we've learned. And, and candidly, God has brought the right people in the last 12 to 18 months to help us shore up our systems, so true, to create man. better experiences. Yes. But I think the the practical takeaway that you're that you're giving there for leaders is this, is Prayer is not our last resort, it's our first response. Boom. Don't go to the practical first and prayer second. Go to prayer yes. first yes. and then begin to implement the practical. Yes. And together, when you're committed to both, that's when you'll see fruit. And here's what the cool thing uh, that, I, that I took when you, when you gave that challenge. Do you remember this? Right before you were going to give us this challenge, we had a team member who's actually in the room right now behind mm -hmm. the camera uh, Burke, who oversees our content Great team, call, man. Yeah. He, he, he said to our team that, man, the, the photo team 
has kind of diminished in this season or taken a few steps back. They've lost some people. Mm -hmm. And so he found himself in that place where he's like, man, we, we need more people that can capture yeah. Yeah. what God is doing here. Yeah. And he shared that what he started to do is pray about it. <laughs> he's, wouldn't you know, he starts praying about it. And what did he share with our team? There's been like three or four people that have, that have joined the team in the last couple of weeks. And it was just so cool to see a practical example of what we're talking about. Like, God is faithful to fulfill his word That's when it. we walk it out as leaders. One of the things that I loved what Burke said, too, is he said not only has he sent amazing people, he said he's sent them, and they're joyful, Come and on, they're they... passionate. It's not, oh, crap, I got to go serve at church. It's, I get to. Wow. What a privilege to serve Jesus with the gift that I have. And he's like, you know, they're taking pictures of worshiping, taking pictures worshiping. And what I shared with him is, Mike, like, it's not, well, we want to be cool on social media. It's, it's man, we're documenting what the Spirit of God is doing. Come on now. And now 10 years down the road, we're going to have a history to honor God and to brag on God and to celebrate all throughout the years what He's doing. Come on, And, man. and it's a bridge because think about it. I don't know about you, but when I grew up at church... Church was for lamos. It was smelly. It was <laughs> like I just gotta, you know, get through it. Seriously. And now, and that's a lot of mentality that a lot of people still have. But now these people are on their phones and they're like, wait, you can like really have a, a genuine smile on your face at church? Like you can dress how you want. Wait, totally. It's authentic and passionate music that's happening. Yeah. And there's a Bible teaching that connects with my real life, but it's accurate, biblically, like contextually sound, I didn't know that could exist. I never knew that existed, Mike, until I got invited to Calvary Chapel, Fort Lauderdale. So crazy, man. I'm on the beach and some random guy, I still think it's an angel to this day, Come on, <laughs> invites dude. me when I'm playing for the Dolphins to a Wednesday night service. I show up. I'm like, is this church? What is this? And I'll never be the same. And here we are, by God's grace, you know, leading another Calvary Chapel in Omaha, Nebraska, that's reaching people in India, Africa, all over the world. It's so good, man. Well, I, how I, humbling. What, what, what an incredible picture that you just gave our listeners, man, that a picture is worth a thousand words and a picture becomes a memorial. We've been talking about memorial this principle, stone, the so memorial yeah. stone principle, yeah. Joshua chapter four, man, being able to look back at the faithfulness of God mm so that we can look ahead at future tests, knowing that the God that was faithful then will be faithful Amen. now. We can continue to move forward with god I mean, this is such a... The, yes, what you're extracting Mike. here, it's so much bigger than just capturing a photo to say, look at us. That's right. This is about a future generation that's going to look back at what God did in 2023 mm. And they're going to look ahead at their future and say, man, if God did it then, he can do, he can it, do it now. And that's such a beautiful, so good, beautiful picture. So, yeah. okay, so we talk about this idea of, of you know, we need more space, mm -hmm. we need more servants. Yeah. The third piece, and you kind of already alluded to this, mm -hmm. but it was like the, the bonus that you added mm -hmm. was then the systems, right? Yeah. And so maybe, do you have any thoughts that you I just do. want to share on that for those that are listening? I do, Mike, because any healthy organization, church that's growing, there's a uh, tendency that I've seen that people systemize the spirit out of it. Mm. Well, there's also, though, on the other side, the Lord's doing amazing things, but be we, we, we were scared of squelching the spirit, so we never put a system in place. Well, the Bible we just read in 1 Corinthians 14, he's a God of, of order. Of order. <laughs> so... Where's the tension? There's a tension in this. You don't want to go corporate and systemize things so crazy that, you know, people are like, ah, the Spirit of God's left the building. So where is that tension and how do you walk in it? For me personally, I'll give you one quick example. Yeah, this is This is what we're doing right here. Yeah. To have a team that develops a system and a strategy and, hey, Todd, like, at this day, we're showing up because what the Spirit is doing, we we want to be able to help people, number one, honor God and help people, and there has to be a system that, that allows this to be fruitful for the long haul. And I mean, just even ways to be able to train better, to clarify vision better, all of that, 
It's mm-hmm. part of a system. And yeah, Cap brought so that good. up. Pastor Cap brought that up. Yeah, and, he did. And I think that's kind of the the third bonus point from that is, okay, as the Lord is expanding, as there is growth, what is the system that God, the Spirit-led system God's providing in that season that will help continue accelerate growth and help people as you're going, not neglecting? Because that's the other thing, too. I feel bad sometimes. It's like, all these people are coming to Christ. Well, how many hungry people really want to move forward in, in mentorship and discipleship and getting in the game? For sure. But if you don't have a clear system to help people grow, shame on us yeah, as yeah. shepherds. That's so good. You got to have tracks for for people to to get on board and, right. and start growing. I, I think you, you've taught me this principle so well over the years because I think, and I, and I want to stick on this for a second because it's true. I mean, you know, we just... The days of of I, I think right now there's God is moving. Yeah. The easiest w- way to kill the movement of God would be for the people of God to come against one another. Like we've just seen Dude, it. Division so often, man. Division yeah. squelches yeah. the spirit, but unity yeah. it commands a blessing, right? That's right? And so there's something really powerful that God's doing. So we got to fight for that. That's right. It's easy to think that. Stru- structure squelches freedom. What you mm-hmm. said is that we actually create structure so that we can have freedom yes, within it. Yes, And Mark. what I found yes. in in ministry and in, in my leadership journey is when I come prepared with a plan, mm. it's honestly when I can move the most freely. Completely agree. When I don't have a plan and I don't come prepared, what I what I'm saying is I want freedom. But I'm just, it's just an excuse for my laziness and my lack of preparation. <laughs> lack of discipline. You know what I mean? Yeah, I totally agree with that. And so do, that. Do, can you maybe just speak into that for just a second? Because I think yeah. I just, I, I really want, I, especially because we're talking to our church right now, our leaders, yeah. and I think it's important for us to get this. Yeah, it's, I think you really summed it up well, Mike. I feel in my life right now in this season, by God's grace, there's a structure and a rhythm to my life in general, how I prepare a study, <laughs> how I show up to a meeting, um, mm. how many workouts I have, how I lead my wife every every day. Th- there's systems and structures in place mm-hmm. that are non-negotiables, but what it does, it gives me a confidence, the ability to walk into a place with a good plan, but to your point, it's the Spirit of God takes over and the 25 years of just taking in the Word of God every day then gives, I don't know, um, this deposit to be able to grab from that adds to that that environment. I don't know if that makes sense. No, it, but it absolutely does. So I think it's both, right? It's, it's stacking one day at a time in the Word of God with the heart of God. It's, it's the systems. And I'll even, I'll say this, Mike, as an organization... I feel like God's sent people to the team in the last, I think you mentioned it, 12 to 18 months that are just at a whole nother level on how they think when it comes to big picture systems that have helped tremendously in our organization Mm -hmm. that you got to be, I I think, have the humility as a leader to be able to go, dude, like you're phenomenal at this. Can you help us? Like, Mm. I want to follow you and learn. It's so good, man. So I think that's... I think that's that's part of the the process as well. Yeah, I heard a leader say this once that you marry your mission and you date your method, or you marry your yeah, mission. I like that. And yeah. you date your model. The the yeah. cool thing about systems is we don't serve systems. Systems serve us. That's right. We serve the spirit. Yeah. So the beauty with that's great. With the beauty with a system is at the end of the day, I think what it really comes back to is like what has the final say. You know what I mean? Like Big time. if if you've got a system and a plan, but the spirit is telling you to go right, are you willing to take the right so when the spirit says to take the so right? Good, man. And so I think that's that's really what we're getting at here is is hmm. both can coexist. Both can coexist. And and you gotta sense the season to shift the system. That's it. And yep. I mean, isn't it funny? Like even practically with our with our Credit card accounting, oh my like goodness. like soft with Divi, oh, like oh, oh. Divi's the savior right now of our of our system Divi, and our bookkeepers, on. like hallelujah, you know. Seriously. So props to to Tracy to to introduce us to that. I think it's going to change the game. But there's, you know, again, that's a practical system, and we kind of like ah, whatever. That's 
who knows what that could do to be better stewards, to create more space for some of our staff to then invest in other areas that 100%. could help, you know, shepherd the flock better. You know, it, it's so I would say, yeah, sense the season, make the shift. And <laughs> it's so crazy. And then again, why? The, I think we always got to come back yeah, we, to the why, we, we Mike, right? Why, is yeah. just think of the the paralyzed man oh. and friends are bringing the paralyzed man. And we say, well, I think there's so many paralyzed men and women, maybe not physically, spiritually, man. These are good people. They're good people. They Their eyes have never been opened to, wait, life could be like this? You mean I was created by God for a relationship with him? I can have joy again? I could have peace again? Mm. Wait, I can love my spouse again? I could, mm. I could learn how life works from his own game plan mm. <laughs> to me. And, you know, people kind of make fun of me sometimes. God's best for your life. You know? I'm yeah. like, hey, bro, I'm trying to be authentic. Authentic. I, I was... I was depressed, drug dealing, you know, young 20 something that was lost. Mm. And I had tried all that other stuff. I was lost. And God gave me a second chance. And when I went all in, here now, 20, you know, five years later, married for almost 23 years with twin boys that are 20, get to do this with you mm. and the rest of the team. Mm. I. <laughs> I just want that for everybody I, I come into contact with. So good. And man. the couple that came a little bit late to church, I will commit whatever we need to do, Mike, to allow more and more people like that that need a touch from Jesus. We got to create space. So that's so good. Third man. worship encounter coming up coming, sometime man. soon. Yep. Uh, we're praying more, more, more resource, more human resource, more servants that show up and go, I can't wait to serve God. I want more people to experience what I've been able to experience, mm. not because out of duty, but out of delight. So good. And God's going to do it. He's he been is. faithful to do it, Mike, for these 15 years. He's going to continue to do it. It's so good, man. I think if, if, if we're really honest, man, I know I'm sitting right across from you. An episode like this reminds me of just the mission. It's so easy in this life, yeah. right, to to get selfish, to think about my own preferences, or how does this church serve me, or how does my organization serve me? Mm. And we know this, Craig says it best, that mm -hmm. the church doesn't exist for me. Mm. We are the church, and we exist for the world. That's right. And really, I think our goal in this episode was really to get all of our minds, mm. eyes, hearts back on the mission, that couple, that paralyzed man, who is that person? And so I want to finish today's episode a little different than how we normally do. Okay. Um, I want you to pray for us, man. Like okay. I think there's probably some leaders that are being stirred up. Okay. They're saying, hey, man, like, wow, I'm recognizing that, that I've gotten a little selfish. I've gotten a little me focused. Mm. I sense that God's moving, and I need to get a little bit more focused on what he's doing and the people he's bringing to be a part of it. So could we just conclude? Yeah. Um, could you just pray that for us? Yeah, before I pray, I, you mentioned Craig Groeschel, and mm. I just, you know, again, want to honor him and Amy. Got a chance to meet them recently. I yeah. know you did as well, and we wouldn't be where we're at. We're standing on his shoulders 100%. and the years of faithfulness for him and Amy and the rest of the Life Church team. And it's cool. I mean, having a Life Church right down the road, right down the road. for us to be able to partner with them and all the other amazing churches in our city with LifeGate. We have great friends and just mm. throughout the city. Um I think that's part of revival is mm. the unity in the church saying, I'm not trying to box out others for bodies and bucks, but we are committing to lock arms in our city to reach and disciple the lost. And Come I, on, man. I want to say that again because yes. Love Church doesn't own, you know, the corner on the block and all that weird churchianity stuff. Yeah, you know, come we're, on, man. We have a certain woe to create self feeders. That's it. And but we're partnering with people, man. I love it. And and Craig, I mean, you remember, dude? Like, Craig downloaded this. I don't know, man. Like it was like a real estate investment, like church leadership, church growth, master like master class in fifteen minutes in a cold tub hot tub combo. That it'll it'll change it'll change me, man. For sure. And so, um, but again, it goes back to 
Lord, break our hearts yeah. for, for those on. that have yet to receive forgiveness, mm. a revelation of who you are, Come on. and then the beginning of a lifelong relationship. So, so yeah, let's good, pray. Man. Lord, yeah. thanks for man. the privilege and honor of serving you and being a part of such a phenomenal church, not just here at Love mm-hmm. Church, the city church, and really just the global church, mm-hmm. authentic believers that by your grace have been touched, forgiven, redeemed. And, you know, we're not trying to just do church here. We genuinely care and we are committed to do whatever it takes to create space and uh, opportunities for those far from you, maybe even close on their way to receive a touch from you. Eyes opened, hearts uh, softened to receive your best and to walk in it. It's just my heart pains for Mm -hmm. those that... Um, for whatever reason, have a bad taste in their mouth about you, yeah. been hurt, mm-hmm. maybe circumstantially, and they're disconnected. I pray for them now. Mm-hmm. Would you, by your grace, touch them in a powerful way? And whether it's at Love Church or another phenomenal Bible teaching, sp- you know, spirit-led church in our mm-hmm. city or in the country, um, get them connected in a beautiful body of believers for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much, man. It was fun. Just an incredible conversation. It's great. I was so blessed. So much revelation and really just believe in that those of you that tuned in today, it's the same for you. Uh, I can say this, that PT and I are incredibly humbled and honored yeah. that you would tune in and listen in. And we're just believing, we're believing in faith that there was something deposited in you today that's going to just help you get a little bit better, that's going to shift your perspective, that's going to help you embrace the season that God has you in. And um, if you if you were encouraged by this, blessed by this, we would just say, hey, share this with somebody that you think could be impacted. Again, mm-hmm. we're doing this because we want to glorify God and we want to help yeah. people. Yeah. So thank you for the honor that we get to help you and the many others. And uh, until next time, keep leading strong. What's up, Love Leadership fam? Man, we know that if you're tuning in, you love to lead. And we hope that this episode brought you value. We're gonna be dropping a new episode the third Thursday of every month. So subscribe, like. Also, there's more Love Leadership content for you on our channel. Go go check it out right now. We can't wait to see you next month.